Hey guys and welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to talk about the new YOLO V8 model. So we're going to take a look at the GitHub repository here. Uh, we're going to scroll through it. We're going to see how we can actually like, use this YOLO V8 model. So it was actually just released yesterday. It is really nice. And we're just going to take a look at it. So here we have all the different kind of like files. This is just an improvement to the YOLO V7 model. This is created by Ultralytics. So this is basically the creators of YOLO V5 as well. So Yoli 5 was act like a really crazy model. It has been used for a really long time. I'm still using the Yoli 5 model for uh, some specific application. And I also have a couple of videos here on the channel about the Yoli 5 model. Recently, I just created a course about the Yoli 7 model. So if you're interested in that, um, definitely go in and check that out. Uh, we have focus on how does the architecture actually works. We train a model and then like the most important thing is the deployment of these trained Yoli 7 models. Um, we can also use the YOLO V8 models directly inside of that course. We can just, instead of using the YOLO V7 model, we just use the YOLO V8 model. And then the most important thing is to actually like deploy the models. So I show different kind of techniques, how we can export, uh, export the models to different formats, how we can use that format in our own Python script for deployment with own and next, um, PyTorch uh, and OpenCV. So this is actually like really nice. Um, again, it is really useful to know how we can actually like deploy these at deep learning models and YOLO v, v7, 8 models that we're trained in our Google Colab. So again, we create a data set, we label our data set, train it in Google Colab or on, on some other different like devices. And then we export the model as in, in some framework. We optimize our model and then we deploy it with the framework that is suitable for our application, depending on if you're running like, for example, on an Intel CPU, uh, Nvidia GPU, if you have GPU and weighable, or if you just want to optimize on CPU, ONX for different kind of like frameworks, or if you have TensorFlow or you're running on edge devices, we have all these different kind of like possibilities with um, with actually like deploying our models. So here we're just going to take a look at the results from the YOLO V8 model. Then we're going to, into, going to go into Python, see how we can actually like do live inference with this new YOLO V8 model. We're going to try a, a call of these models to see the results, how fast they're actually like going to run. I'm just going to say now that the results that we're going to get is really awesome. We're going to have a high number of frames per seconds. I'm going to show you that with this small model, we're able to run at 200 frames per seconds on my NVIDIA RTX 4090 graphics card. We can also run this extra large model. As you can see here, we're going to run that as well. And we will actually like still get 50 frames per seconds. You will still be able to run in real time on like lower like hardware or like lower resources. Even on the CPU, you should be able to run these models here with um, a high number of frames per seconds compared to some of the other models. Here we can see the results. They are benchmarks up against the Coco data set. We have the mean average position of 50 up to uh, 95 intervals. Then we have the YOLO V8 model in blue. And then we have the YOLO V7 and YOLO V5. So on this channel here, we have been using all these variations of online versions of the YOLO models. But now we can just see that this YOLO V8 model, it just has way higher, like actually like way higher, like mean, mean average position um, on the Coco data set compared to some of the other models here. Is slightly better than um, band, than the YOLO V7 model here, but it is still better. We can see that the Nano model here is actually like way better than um, the YOLO V5 model. Compared to YOLO V6, it is not really that much better. We can see the small model is actually like, um, it just have lower number of parameters. Uh, but again, we also increased the, the mean average position. The extra large model here, they just have less parameters. They are more accurate. They can run faster and all those different kind of things. So it's basically just a version improvement of the previous models over here to the right we can see the latency and also just like how many frames per second and how long does it actually take to process these images this is benchmark against our 800 um, nvidia gpu i'm not really a fan of them benchmarking it with this gpu here because this is not really like a gpu we're using for deployment it's not really a common gpu uh, used in most systems this is gpus for like uh, some cloud resources where you actually like, train your models um so that is and it's really good GPU for that, but not really for deploying it on, on actual like devices. But here again, we can just see the milliseconds per image. So this is the processing time that it takes to process these images. And again, we can, we can just see that we have really high mean accuracy, um, and it can act like inc it can act like process these images here rather fast. So here we had like two milliseconds per image. So this is around like, uh, f it is, it is actually like 500 frames per second with this really crazy GPU. It is not really necessary. And I think this is not a good benchmark, uh, but this doesn't really matter. It still shows the performance. It, it shows the comparisons between the different models. We can see we have higher accuracy and we also have lower inference speed. Again, depending on the applications, you can go for like the nano model, the large models, small models. 
the model I've used the most is the small model because we, we just get really high accuracy. We still get really high accuracy and we also have really uh, like low inference time. So it is basically just like a really good model for um, a lot of like common and, and standard um, AI machine learning, deep learning applications and projects. We can see some documentation of how to install it. We can basically just go in and pip install it. I create a new Anaconda environment. So I went into my Anaconda prompt. And then I basically just created a new um, Anaconda environment. You can do it with this. I'm using Anaconda as my Python distribution. And then you can have this Conda create. You just specify here a name and then you just specify the name. So I created one called Yola V8. Then when you have created that, we can guys just go in and activate the environment. So we have Conda activate. And then we have Yola V8. Then we can activate our environment now. We can go in, pip install Ultralytics. We can go in and install all the requirements um, from here. So we can basically just pip install this requirements text files. It will install all the dependencies of your computer. Um, if you don't already like have those installed in your base, base installation or you just want to create like a whole new environment. We can see all the different kind of like files. So they actually like, use a new structure instead of calling these Python scripts. Uh, when we actually like, want to train, do predictions and so on um, from the command line. So now we have this YOLO command. We can run the different kind of like tasks. So we can set it equal to detection, classify and segmentation. So these are the different three different tasks that we can do with this new YOLO V8 model. So we can do detection, classification and segmentation. We can also set it for a specific mode. So we can do training, prediction and validation. We can also set it to export. And then we can choose the format that we actually like, want to ex uh, export our model as. So the export types is actually like really nice supported with this new v 8 model. We can export to basically like any format that we're using right now as the, like the main standard for both like um, deploying the models on optimized install CPUs, GPUs like Tensor RT, um, just in TensorFlow and TensorFlow and PyTorch in general, and also the common ONNX um, ONNX uh, framework where we can deploy the models on different kind of like OpenCV. Um, as basically like just a general format for like doing inference with these neural networks here with the own and next runtime. Here we can see this short snippet of how to use it in Python. So this is basically what I'm going to do. And then we're going to run it to see live inference with, uh, with a webcam with this new YOLO V8 model. We see some checkpoints, the, the image dimensions here. So 640 uh, by 640, mean average position, parameters, and also like flowing point and uh, operations per second. Uh, here we can see like different kind of like integrations for a data set. You can use RoboFlow to actually like label your own data set, export the data set and train your YOLO V8 model directly as we've been doing with the YOLO V7, YOLO V5 models and all those different kind of things. We can do some training in some in notebooks. We can do some locking of our tr act like training deploy them uh, on platforms like Neural Magic. Uh, we can export it to TensorFlow, PyTorch, um, ONNX, um, iOS, um, OpenVINO here, and TensorRT. So we have all these different kind of like frameworks supported, which is really cool. So it's not just here at the top here, we can actually get the Google Colab notebook. So we can just open it up in Google Colab. We can go in, train our own YOLO V7 model. We can see how we can do segmentation, like uh, detection and also classification. I'm going to create another video about that. So definitely hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video. If you want to get a notification when I upload a new videos here on the channel. So I'm actually going to create another video where we're going to train these new YOLO V8 models on custom data sets. We're going to train it from scratch, play around with some of the different kind of parameters, export them. I'm going to show you how we can export these models and deploy it with different frameworks. But in this video here, we're just going to see the inference results and take a look at this newly released YOLO V8 model because it has really nice performance and it runs really fast. And as we're going to see, it will be able to run in real time. So I've now turned into Visual Studio Code. We're going to take a look at how to actually use this in Python so we can do it in a couple of lines of code. Instead of just passing in command lines, we can then use it in Python now, where instead of passing in like um, the argument list to our uh, command prompt, we can basically specify them as arguments to our function. So I have this predict, and then we can pass in the different kind of like um, the different kind of like input arguments to our function. Then we can basically do predictions on our source. So this is the webcam. We can also do it on images, folders, uh, and also videos. Uh, but if you specify zero here, it will use the webcam. You can specify all these other different kind of like parameters. So here we're going to set show equal to true. So we can see the results um, of our inference. You can go inside the, um, the autolytics documentation and see all the different kind of like um, arguments that you can pass in. But these are 
uh, the most common ones just to get it up running to see how the inference acts like works. You'll, you'll get the outputs uh, in the command prompt or like in, in the actual like output terminal down here at the bottom. You'll be able to see the results, the classes that it is detecting and also how fast it processes these images. When you terminate the program, you can go in here and print the results. You can extract all the information, all the bounding boxes, classes and so on of your detections. Up here, you can basically just specify the models. First of all, is just try with the small model and see how the inference work with that. So basically this model that predict here, it just returns or it just uses this detection predictor, which contains some pre-processing steps and all those different things. So we might actually be able to go in, extract that information, make some adjustments to these functions and so on. But again, I'm going to create another video where we're actually going to deploy these models ourselves, because again, we just have these PyTorch models or ONNX models, or depending on what format we actually like export it to. We're going to open up with OMSV. We're going to open up a webcam, have our while loop running. We just read in our images, pass the images through our models here, do some processing, show the results in our own way. So we basically just create everything ourselves instead of just having this predict function here uh, where it's, it's kind of like hard to extract information and use it in our own project and application. So we're definitely going to cover that in another video together with act like training our own Jollibee 8 models. So now we're just going to run it and see the results. I have a webcam here that it should open up. So here we can see that we are running on the GPU. I have a G, uh, GeForce RTX 4090. So here we can just see what, what is act like detecting. So here we can see that it is detecting a mouse, a person, um, a TV here as my um, as my computer, like my PC. We have a laptop, we have a TV. So this act like correct predictions, even though we can even only see my hand, it detects it as a person with really high confidence score. Here we can see um, all the different like outputs. We can see the image dimensions, the re resolution of our images, um, how many objects we're detecting, what type of optics, and then we can see the inference time over here to the right. So actually like with five milliseconds, so this is 200 Hertz. So this corresponds to 200 frames per second. So again, this is just really crazy inference time. We are able to like run it in, in real time. So this is the small model. So it should actually like run pretty fast. If you just here terminate it, we can just try with the nano model just to see how fast that actually like runs. When we terminate the program, I'm here, I'm just going to print the results and then we can extract all the information of all the detections that we had. So now we're just going to run the nano model and then we'll take a look at the extra large model because with the extra large model, we get some really nice results. Here, I'm just interested in seeing how fast this act like runs. So here we can see it still runs like four or five milliseconds. It is closer to four, millis four milliseconds for uh, for inference speed. So this is act like even faster. So it's above 200 frames per second when we're doing inference. We can just see where we can move the webcam around. So it only takes like in 30 images from the webcam. So it doesn't really take up a lot of processing power um, by running these algorithms. We can see it's still, it is really st still really good at detecting all these, these different kind of like things. I can turn it around. We can see if we can detect some other things in the background. So here we have a chair in the background and we have a couch kind of like a couch, <laughs> a dog couch. But we see that these results here are pretty nice. Let's just try with the extra large model here to end it off with. Um, we get all the detections. We change this to X. So this is really easy to get started with. You can basically just set it up with these lines of code, um, play around with yourself, try it out on your own laptop and so on. So now we're going to run it with the extra large model and see the results. Uh, so first of all, let's just see how many frames per second we get. So we get uh, 20 milliseconds so that is around like 50 frames per second so even though we're running the largest model here um, on my computer like the largest v 8 model we still have 50 frames per second and way over uh, real time if you have like a, a bit slower gpu compared to our 4090 rtx you will still be able to run like 20 30 frames per second with this extra large model but again the extra large model is it's probably like overkill for most applications and projects and you will be more than fine with the small model uh, and even maybe like the nano model when you have fine tuning on your own data set. Here we can just see that it detects the, the TV correctly. Uh, we have TV, we have laptop. Uh, so this is a laptop. We detect the mouse over here in the background. We have the keyboard, mouse, person, mouse in the background, TV. So these are just some really nice predictions as you can see here. Really great model. It was just recently released and we're going to get some real nice results. This is just an improvement over the other models. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video if you like the content and you want more in the future. It really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm also currently doing these deep learning tutorials, computer vision tutorials, where we go over the basic theory about like deep learning, 
how neural networks actually work, how we can create our own neural networks, the different kind of parameters, how we can tune them, how we can train our own functions, how those um, parameters affect the neural network while training, and then also how we can deploy the models for our own projects and applications. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else on the next video, guys. Bye for now.